Alright, what's going on you guys? Nick here with Nick on the Powers. A lot of you guys seem to enjoy the video I did a couple days ago on the WWE.com's list for the top 20 WWE physiques of all time. Um, so I wanted to do a similar video here. And this is going to be on Muscle and Fitness's list of the top 10 most aesthetic physiques from Bodybuilding's Golden Era. So I want to get your guys' feedback on this list. Um, and see if you guys agree with the picks that Muscle and Fitness has for the top 10 most aesthetic physiques of all time from the Golden Era. So... Coming in at number 10, you have Muhammad Makawe. So Muhammad Makawe was a very unique bodybuilder. He was one of the few bodybuilders to beat Lee Haney. Um, and he actually beat Lee Haney on several occasions. I believe he was from the 1980s era of bodybuilding. Um, he's from Egypt. He's a relatively small bodybuilder standing 5 foot 3 inches tall, weighing roughly 160 pounds on stage. Let me show you guys some photos of Muhammad Makawe. This guy was a beast, man. He was very shredded. He was very aesthetic. Um, and again, he was one of the few guys to ever beat Lee Haney. So he holds that unique distinction. Um, and he did so several times. Fantastic bodybuilder. Fantastic physique. Great conditioning for that era of bodybuilding. There he is with Lee Haney. Posing was fantastic. Very unique posing style. I definitely would agree with him being on this list. So as we go down the list, we're going to go through bodybuilders that I think were excluded from this list and could be included because there were some names that I felt they left out um, and could have put in there. But overall, I think they had a pretty solid top 10, um, comparatively speaking, to the WWE list where I felt um, a lot of the guys on that list didn't deserve to be on there. But this top 10 list I thought was pretty solid. And Muhammad Makawe, I think, is a great choice for that list, especially when you're talking about guys that never won the Olympia that were extremely aesthetic. Muhammad Makawe was definitely one of those guys. I mean, he was just he was a he was a phenomenal bodybuilder. So let's go down here. So coming in at number nine, you have Sergio Oliva Sr. Sergio Oliva Sr. obviously a three-time Mr. Olympia winner. Solid choice for this list. Standing five foot ten inches tall, two hundred and forty pounds competition weight. One of the few bodybuilders, one of three bodybuilders actually, to ever beat Arnold Schwarzenegger on stage. I'll show you guys some photos of Sergio, although I'm sure many of you are already familiar with him. Um, obviously, he's known for that victory pose. I believe this photo was from his comeback um, in the mid-80s, not from his actual prime. This photo here was from his prime. Definitely a very aesthetic bodybuilder, a legendary bodybuilder, three-time Mr. Olympia. The first to win it three times, actually, because Larry Scott won it twice. Um, so Sergio was the first to win it more than twice. So he was the three-time, the first ever three-time Mr. Olympia. Actually, I think that's my video right there. Let's keep going here. Uh, great choice here. Coming in at number eight, you've got Robbie Robinson. Robbie Robinson, five foot seven, two hundred pounds. Robbie Robinson, uh, I believe he was one of the oldest bodybuilders to ever compete in a pro bodybuilding show, competing into his mid to late fifties. Um, he's in his late 70s now, and he's still bodybuilding, still doing guest posing, and he still looks phenomenal. Let's see if I can find you guys a photo of Robbie Robinson now. I definitely think he's a good choice for this list. I mean, look at this guy. He's in his 70s. Phenomenal. Let's just look at him in his prime really quick so you guys can have an idea. Um, he was most well known for his bicep development. He had those nice uh, kind of heart-shaped bicep peaks. A lot of people say he had the best biceps of all time. Look at that. Look at that taper, man. Absolutely insane. This was from his later competitive years. He's probably closer to 50 in this photo here. So he's just a guy that had a really long bodybuilding career. He was able to maintain his physique obviously um, into a very late age into his 70s just a kind of a perennial good physique a guy that maintained the physique for a very long time living that bodybuilding lifestyle there he is with mike menser hopefully that it's kind of a crappy photo there he is with phil hill awesome so robbie robinson coming in eighth i like that decision there all right lee haney in number seven I'm surprised he's not placing higher here. So Lee Haney, obviously, eight-time Mr. Olympia. Um, he ties that record with Ronnie Coleman. I'm sure many of you guys are already familiar with Lee Haney's physique, but we'll go ahead and pull up some photos of Lee Haney for you guys in case you don't know. Um, also a guy known for having a legendary V taper, vacuum pose. Specifically, the taper in the front double bicep 
It was what he was known for. Incredible V taper, abdominal development. This photo here, I mean, just legendary small waist. I'm curious to see who's ahead of Lee Haney on this list because Lee Haney, that's Robbie Robinson there. Lee Haney is certainly on my list of most aesthetic bodybuilders of all time. Just legendary V taper. All right, let's go back to the list. All right. Man, they, they must have a pretty solid top five here for Frank Zane to be in sixth um, and not in the top five. Frank Zane, many people regard him as the father of aesthetics or the godfather of aesthetics. Um, Three-time Mr. Olympia Frank Zane, 77, 78, and 79, I believe. Five foot nine, 185 pounds on stage. So one of the smaller guys, and this was a guy that won shows because of his aesthetics, because of his conditioning, his aesthetics, how shredded he was. He beat a lot of guys that were much, much bigger than him. Um in many cases, winning that under 200 division at the, at the Olympia and then winning the overall. So back in the 70s, if you guys aren't familiar, um, they had the over and under 200 categories. So Frank Zane was a guy that would compete in the under 200, and he was one of the few guys that would win the under 200 and then beat the guy that won the heavyweight category to win the overall. I think a famous example of that, um, Ken Waller. I think he beat Ken Waller when Ken Waller won the overall, or the heavyweight division, then Frank Zane won the overall. I think that also happened with Frank and Mike Menser as well. I'll show you guys some photos of Frank Zane. Obviously, one of the most legendary posers in terms of the vacuum pose. Yeah, I'm really surprised he's in sixth and not higher on that list because his vacuum pose was probably one of the most iconic aesthetic poses of all time. I mean, it doesn't. It really doesn't get much better than the Frank Zane vacuum pose when you're talking about aesthetic bodybuilders. I mean, this guy was uh, just a landmark vacuum pose bodybuilder. Just insane. There's Arnold. Arnold's got to be on this list, man. I'd be surprised if he's not. All right, Samir so Benut coming in number five. He was the winner of the 1983 Mr. Olympia, one of the few bodybuilders to only win the Olympia one time. Five foot seven, 190 pounds. So again, a relatively smaller bodybuilder, better known as the Lion of Lebanon. I'll show you guys some photos of Samir Benut here. See if you agree with him being um, in this placing. His conditioning in '83 was phenomenal. I think that's really what won the show for him um, in '83. Great arms. You know, you got the serratus muscle coming in. It was, you know, he was one of the better conditioned guys, but his back, man, his back was really ahead of his era. Here, let me find you guys a really good photo of his back. Look at this photo right here. This guy had one of the best backs to ever come out of the 80s. I mean, incredible. I agree with him being on this list. I don't know if I would place him higher than Frank Zane if you're ranking them based on aesthetics, but... Certainly he would be in my top 10 as well. There's, a, there's another good shot. Crazy back development on this guy. Let's see who's in the top four here. Wow, Arnold Schwarzenegger in fourth. I'm really curious who the top three is now. Arnold Schwarzenegger coming in fourth, standing six foot two, 235 pounds. One of the bigger guys by a long shot on this list. Seven time Mr. Olympia. Let's see if I know this off the top of my head. 1970, 1971, 1972, 73, 74, 75, and then 1980. Those were his seven Mr. Olympias um, and a five-time Mr. Universe. Four times winning the NABA Mr. Universe and one time winning the IFBB Mr. Universe. So let's see if they give a reason why they have him in fourth here. Not really much reason there. I'm sure many of you guys are already familiar with Arnold Schwarzenegger's physique, but for reference purposes... I would have definitely had him higher as well. Honestly, my top three would, about, would probably be Frank Zane, Arnold Schwarzenegger, maybe a guy like Charles Claremont. Arnold probably you know, having one of the most aesthetic front double biceps in the history of bodybuilding. These legendary photos here. I think this shot was really one of Arnold's most aesthetic shots, kind of that single front double bicep, one arm behind the head. Typically, he would hit it with like a vacuum pose. Let's see if there's any photos of that. There's the uh, javelin or archer pose. Iconic Arnold pose there. 
That's a Photoshop picture for sure. His crazy uh, variation of the side chest there. Here's some more single bicep shots of Arnold. I think he was really one of the most aesthetic guys to pull off that single bicep pose for sure. I don't know, man. I would have had Arnold higher than fourth. Really curious to see who the top three are here. Let's go back to the list. Franco Colombo? Oh, Serge Nubre. Serge Nubre coming in third. Six foot tall, 220 pounds. Serge Nubre was also featured in Pumping Iron. Um, he took second at the 1975 Mr. Olympia, which was interesting because in Pumping Iron, they really focused mostly on Arnold versus Lou Ferrigno. Lou Ferrigno would take third. Serge Nubre would actually beat him. Um, and you guys may have seen the videos I've done on this, but there was a lot of controversy about why you know, Serge Nubre wasn't featured as heavily in Pumping Iron as Lou Ferrigno and Arnold Schwarzenegger were, even though, Lou, or even though Serge Nubre was clearly one of the top threats to the title. Um, one of those issues was payment. He wanted to be paid more than he was because he had prior acting roles, um, so he thought he deserved more money for longer appearances in the movie, so that was part of the problem. Um, also, some adult films that he allegedly participated in prior to the 1975 Olympia. Um, they didn't want controversy associated with the documentary, um, so that's another reason why people say he wasn't featured as heavily. I certainly see he would be in my top ten as well, so I don't know if I would have him as high as third, but Serge Nubre would certainly be in my top ten. I'll pull up some photos for you guys of Serge Nubre as well. Again, let me know in the comment section below what you guys think um, of this list and how you guys would change the ordering or who, who you guys would add um, to this list. Yeah, Serge Nubre was phenomenal. There's a good pose right there. That's a good crucifix pose. See, there's him hitting um, the single bicep from the front. And you can see the main difference. See, th this is why I would have Arnold higher than Serge Nubre. Because while Serge Nubre is crazy aesthetic, just compare that to Arnold's single front double, or single front bicep. Um, I think Arnold looks way more aesthetic in that particular pose. But Serge, you know, certainly had an incredibly uh, aesthetic physique. And his conditioning was fantastic as well. Especially for the 70s era of bodybuilding. All right, solid pick. Let's see who our top two are here. I'm actually really curious. I didn't look at this list before I made the video. Um, I didn't look at who the top three were. Awesome. Lee Labrada coming in second. I'm, I'm still very curious who the number one guy is, but Lee Labrada coming in second, a.k.a. Mass with Class, a multiple-time runner-up at the Mr. Olympia. Let's see, they have his height listed here at five foot six, 185 pounds, so a smaller guy. His son, Hunter Labrada, actually just earned his pro card recently by winning the NPC National, so um, congratulations to Hunter. I'll show you guys some photos of Lee Labrada here. There's a pretty good representation. Um, very artistic poser, very uh, fluent poser. That's a good shot. That's a pretty trademark Lee Labrada pose there. So obviously much shorter in stature, but still a very aesthetic bodybuilder. Man, I'm really curious who that number one spot is now. If they don't have Bob Paris on this list, I'd be very, very surprised. There's a good pose right there. Kind of a variation of the victory pose. Now here's another guy I'm surprised isn't on this list is Brian Buchanan. Brian Buchanan is known for having arguably the smallest waist or the craziest V-taper in the history of bodybuilding. Let me show you guys Brian Buchanan really quick. He might be number one on this list. I don't know, but let me show you guys just for reference before we get to number one. Look how small this guy's waist is. It's almost too small. It's just insane. Absolutely insane. And then with the vacuum pose, I mean, come on, man. Insane. All right. So without further ado, let's get to number one on the list. Oh, yeah. Bob Paris. Awesome. So I actually did a video earlier this month um, titled The Most Aesthetic Athlete in the History of Bodybuilding, Bob Paris. Um, and Bob Paris, 
he was he received that title back in 2006. It was given to him by Flex Magazine. Um, so that's probably why they continued to have him as number one on this list because they already gave him that title, um, you know, over a decade ago. But I'm kind of surprised by some of the guys that weren't on this list. But Bob Parrison, number one, I can certainly see that. Six foot tall, 230 pounds. Here's the reasoning they give. Although he never earned a Sandow trophy, Bob Paris tops our list as the epitome of aesthetics. From his first appearance in a national bodybuilding contest, the 1982 NPC USA's, Bob Paris had the sport a buzz about his perfect physique. The following year, Paris took home top on- honors at NPC Nationals, earning his pro card. Surprisingly, he would never place higher than third in a pro career that spanned nine years. He became the unanimous standard bearer of an aesthetic ideal. Contrary to the general perception that balanced bodybuilders were relative lightweights in the gym, Paris was a hardcore gym rat who often tackled power exercises in his training routine. So it's kind of fascinating they don't mention kind of the scandal. I, I wouldn't really call it a scandal, but the controversy um, of Bob Paris coming out as an openly gay bodybuilder, um, which a lot of people think is kind of what ruined his bodybuilding career. It caused him to retire. Um, people believe it caused politics. Um, to make him place lower than he should have. Let me show you guys some photos, though, um, of the legendary Bob Paris, one of the best posers in the history of bodybuilding, hands down. Um, Very artistic approach to bodybuilding, and that's why I think he's on this list. I mean, some poses you just didn't see other guys hit. He was phenomenal. Here's a guy that I think should be on this list. That's Francis Benfato right there. (laughs) Quite the aesthetic manlet they have that photo titled. I think that's the photo I used as the thumbnail for my uh, Bob Paris video. I mean, the posing was just phenomenal. Actually, let's go over to YouTube here. Let's see if I can find you guys a good video of Bob Paris posing. Give you guys kind of an idea of how good of a poser Paris was. Um, Just the way he would start out his routine, just different from any other bodybuilder. Just a phenomenal poser. You guys can kind of get the idea there. So let's go ahead and pause this. So that is the list of the top 10 most aesthetic physiques. Let's see what what exactly they titled this article. The top 10 most aesthetic physiques from bodybuilding's golden era. So let me know in the comment section below who you guys would add, who you guys would subtract, and which placings you would change on this list. Thank you guys for watching the video, and please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Nick Strength and Power, signing out.